This week we're going to keep working with KML and KMZ files, working towards making a map like this in Google Earth. Welcome to another MapPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to keep working towards making a, a contour map that we can view in Google Earth. We're not going to get all the way there, but we're going to do some processing of our data and next week we'll be ready to write those contours out. So I'm going to go ahead and get our mesonet data just like we did last week. And now we're going to do some more imports because we're going to make a static map so we understand our data before we make the KML file. So I'm going to import cartopy.crs for the coordinate reference system as ccrs, import cartopy.feature as cfeature, and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. All right, I'm going to set up some projection information. Our data projection is Latin lawn, also known as plot curry. And the two projection for this map, just so we have to do some mapping and transforms to get practice, let's do an Albers equal area plot. And I'm going to set the central longitude to be minus 97 and the central latitude to be 38. Okay, so we're going to have to take this irregularly spaced data and grid it up to be able to contour it. And for that we can use interpolate to grid from MetPy's interpolate submodule. So let's go ahead and do some more imports here from metpy.interpolate we're going to import interpolate to grid use tab completion there to save ourselves some typing and then I'm going to go ahead and import numpy as np might be useful later on it's always handy to have imported now, let's think about this. How are we going to do our projection? We're going to need to create a grid with some number of neighbors and a radius and a resolution, which are all documented in the doc string, as we'll see. We'll interpolate our variable, in this case, let's say temperature, to that grid, and then we can contour it. Before I start doing all of that interpolation, I like to just go ahead and make a quick map so I see what I've got and can think about the problem. So I'm going to create a figure and I'm going to set the fig size to something that's going to fit reasonably on my screen here, maybe 10 by 5. Create an axis. I'm going to use the add subplot method. One row, one column, first plot. And the projection is going to be our two projection or our map projection. I'm going to set the extent to be Oklahoma, so minus 104 to minus 94, and let's say 33 to 38 latitude. I'm going to add feature, the most obvious one here being states. I'm going to use the with scale. 1 to 50 million. Now we could go ahead and add oceans and borders and all of that, but we're zoomed in on Oklahoma, so it doesn't make sense to spend time drawing those really. And let's go ahead and make a plot of our station locations. So that's going to be the latitude and longitudes that our station are at. I'm going to use axe.scatter for this. If we go back up here to our data frame, we see it's lat and lawn. 
So data frame lawn. Data frame lat. And what are we missing here? We're going to have to tell it that these are in plat curry, or these are in our data projection. Because if we don't, let's just see what happens. We get everything up here in the center of Kansas somewhere. So if we look at our doc string, we can see that we can use the transform keyword and specify that these are in our data projection, lat lawn, and now they get transformed and we can plot them properly. But we can also go ahead and pre-transform them to a map coordinate. So let's see how we might do that. I'm going to put a cell in above here. I'm going to say X projected, Y projected, and then an altitude that we don't need. So I'm going to just assign it to underscore. On our two projection, or what we want the output in, I'm going to call the transform points method the data projection, so the coordinate system that we're in, and then our lawns and our lats. And I'm going to transform that output, or transpose that output, so it's in the correct order for this unpacking. Now, in our scatter, I can get rid of that and just use XP and YP for the X and Y projected coordinates in this hours equal area coordinate system. And just to make sure that we're really seeing a change, I'm going to use a plus marker. I'm going to make the marker black and the size of 30. And there we go. So there's our station locations. Great. Now we're ready. We understand where our stations are. We understand something about the spatial distribution of them. We can now go ahead and do our interpolation. We're going to use the interpolate to grid method, of course. We can look at the function signature here, and you can, of course, read everything in the doc string. It's going to return our grid x, grid y coordinates, and grid temperature, where it has taken the temperature variable and gridded it. We're going to pass it x and y projected coordinates our variable that we want to grid. I'm going to use dot values to just get the numpy array from our data frame. Now we'll go ahead and specify a Cressman interpolation. Minimum neighbors of 1. A search radius of 60,000. Now this is something that we can just tweak and play with, uh, but it's going to be in the same units as whatever projection we're giving it and a resolution of 20,000. All right, so let's try this and see what happens. We get an error. What does it say? We go down to the bottom. Can't multiply sequence by nonint of type numpy float 64. Not super helpful here. But let's go back and look at df tier dot values and see what we have. Interestingly enough, these are all strings, not numbers, not integers or floats. And we've got some missing data that's just represented by a space character. And that's not very great at all. In fact, that's what's causing all of our nightmares here. So what we need to do is go back up to where we read our data. And we're going to specify the not a number value to be a space. So that's going to help some. If we go back down and look at our tier.values, now we see we have numbers and NANs. So that's a start. But we want to get rid of the NANs. We don't want to contour things that have NAN. There are a few ways you could do this. Uh, MetPy does have a remove NAN observations method. But I'm just going to use uh, pandas here. We're still a pandas data frame. 
And to see how many observations we drop, I'm going to print the length of my data frame. I'm going to call the drop in a method. For the subset, I'm going to specify that for me not to drop this row, it needs to have the air temperature, the lat, and the lawn. If we're missing any of those pieces of information, it's not a usable data point, and we want to drop the row. And we'll do that in place so I don't have to reassign. Now we see we went from 120 data points to 117, so we only dropped three stations. And if we look at tier.values now, we have all numerical values, no NANs. But we're still not happy in our interpolate to grid. Index 119 is out of bounds, x is 0. So what happened? Out of order execution in the notebook. This is a really common trap, and it's something that as we bounce around in the notebook, I want to make sure I show you because you can do everything right, but if you don't run all of your cells, it can still be a problem. So we still had 120 X and Y transformed points, but we only have 117 T air values. So if I rerun all those cells, then great. Now I get an interpolated grid. Let's go ahead and plot our grid. So I'm going to do a scatter of grid X, grid Y. And we could plot these with whatever marker or size we want. I'm going to do a size equals 2, so a small marker. We'll just leave them as circles. And this looks pretty good. Now, of course, I tuned a little bit before I did this recording to get the optimal spacing that I thought looked reasonable for the number of stations that we've got here. So now we've got our grid and we've got some interpolated values. Let's go ahead and try to make a contour. I'm going to use contour F for a filled contour. Grid X, grid Y, grid temperature. I'm going to specify 20 levels of contour because there's not actually a lot of temperature gradient right now. We'll use the cool warm color map. That seems appropriate. And there we go. So now all of our markers have disappeared. We could set Z order or we could just change the order that we're plotting things in. Yeah, just like that. So now we know where our stations are, where our interpolated grid is, and where the contours are. We're going to go ahead and grab a handle to those contours. I'm going to call them CS. And next week, we're going to look at how we can pick apart these contours to get the, uh, the different collections and the paths in these contour objects and how we can then make those into contours that we can bring in to Google Earth. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's Pie Monday.